this is a product demonstration for the CFO Financial Profiler product by Global. Uh, we'll jump right into it. Uh, the first two tabs, uh, Input Income and Input Balance Sheet, the red ones are as titled, where you, the input data goes. Uh, this is really where most of the inputs go. The rest of the, the tool um, derives its information based on these first two tabs. Um, set up for your categories to be on the left, years uh, along the right, along the columns, along the top. Uh, anything that's in blue over here, the categories on the left are pre-populated, but you have the ability to customize. So let's say you have a little popcorn machine in your office um, that earns a very minimal amount of revenue. 40, 50, 60, let's go ahead and change this to 20. Um, so you have the ability to um, customize based on your needs and your desires as a business or a business consultant to make this more applicable to you. Um, along the top are some fairly self-explanatory um, options. You click on here to change the dates and if you want to change the signs in front of the revenue there's some options there for our international friends. Um, input balance sheet set up very similar with the ability to customize and has pre-populated as well um, categories. Cover page for printing purposes is the next tab. Moving on, the next, the income statement and balance sheet, just uh, a summation basically of the input tabs, which just makes it easy for printing purposes. Um, from here on, shows the uh, really the, the the benefits of the tool. Um, the uh, statement of cash flows is derived from that information. It's not something that's very commonly used in small businesses, uh, but it's un it's great to understand what cash flow inflows and outflows are coming from operations. This particular business in 2005 had a negative 235,000 from cash uh, operation cash flow from operations, which means they had to finance in order to keep their business running. Um, in 2007, they were able to turn that positive uh, into a, pos a small gain, positive cash flow. Uh, growth rates identify the growth in as compared to the growth in sales. Um, so we see growth rate was you know 7.2, 9.2, 6.5 in in, uh, in 2007. Well, it, it takes a look at the expense categories and compares that to how quickly uh, it's growing against sales. So anything that's red, it's growing more quickly than sales. You don't want your expenses to grow more quickly usually than uh, the, than your sales revenue. So this is easy way to identify where maybe some problem issues are. Uh, looking forward, the pro forma income statement does a forecast based on a straight line uh, forecast um, to uh, guess or forecast um, what the uh, each line item will look like in the future. So that popcorn revenue uh, we said went 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. So it was growing by $10 a year. Well, the tool identifies that and says, okay, if things stay the way they are, you're going to grow 70, 80, 90, 100, 110. Um, through 2012. It does that for every single line item, yeah, assuming things stay the way they are, and we'll go back, we'll come back to that. Similarly with the balance sheet, um, we see that their cash will have an issue starting in 2009, but forecasting forward, that's, uh, that's what, the, what will happen um, if, if things stay the way, the way they are um, within the business. Um, also drives the, the pro forma cash flows. Moving forward, we look at the, the key ratios. Key ratios are typically just left to accountants, but in my opinion, a, a good manager needs to understand key ratios um, and how to influence them to manage your business. So, for instance, let's say we don't, you as a manager, don't know key ratios. Well, the tool helps you understand those. Um, for instance, average collection period. What is that? Click on it. It takes you to a tab that identifies average collection period. The arrow shows you want it to be lower. Um, it's a graphical representation that says, okay, this should be um, decreasing. And it also shows based on your data you put in, it looks like yours is rising. So it's going the wrong direction. You want to learn more, this takes you to the internet to identify how it's used and how to influence. Here it shows the uh, actual formula that's used to calculate it. And we learn here that average collection period is essentially how many days it takes to collect our bills from our customers. Let's go back, going back to the ratios. Um, it shows what the ratios are 03 through 07, um, but also gives a look in the future what the pro forma is, uh, what the ratios will be in the future. You're able to compare to the industry by doing a search. 
um, on the internet, you can identify the average ratios for a particular industry that you're in. The checks say you're doing well compared to the industry. The X's say you're not doing well. So in the average collection period, we are not doing as well as the industry. This is that definitions tab that we refer was referred to. All of the, the ratio information, again, a good manager needs to understand ratios. Quickly moving forward, we've got a dashboard that shows how sales are uh, improving. Uh, in, in this particular case, um, and how uh, the, the the ratios are are trending, um, again a, a quick good dashboard for a manager to understand and to, to print out. Um, this looks takes a look moving forward. Okay, pro forma, what do we anticipate the uh, the growth going to be in in all of the ratios and uh, um, sales and and net income? Okay, most importantly, I think more well very important. Many uh, business owners need to understand and want to understand evaluation. How much is their business worth? Um, while doing a real, a true evalu evaluation for the purpose of sell, uh, we recommend pulling in a, a, a professional to value the business because that's very subjective and negotiable. Um, but this gives a good idea of what the business is worth. We use three different valuation methods to triangulate one valuation amount. EBITDA multiple, book value multiple, and discounted cash flow. Um, launch the valuation tool, we can change our, our current assumptions. So right now the business is valuated around two million dollars based on the, the current assumptions. You can change the assumptions here. You can also change how much each is weighted for the uh, triangulated amount uh, or methods. So for instance, let's see what it's going to be worth in 2012. Slide that over. Um, looks like it goes up a little bit to 2.4 million dollars. Again, that's assuming things stay the way they are. But any consultant or any business owner, I think, was trying to improve. So let's let's say we we have some improvements and we want to see the impact on the business. So go back to the pro forma income tab. We're able to see here the green shows what the growth rate is predicted to be, is forecasted to be. Well. I happen to know that we have a certain product that uh, is going to come out. We, we anticipate sales are going to grow by 3% as opposed to the 1% that's forecasted. So I've, I've pre-populated some of these data cells and to use my forecast rather than the tools, I go ahead and click that checkbox. We also are going to uh, work on job costs. Uh, we're going to decrease salaries or you know make a headcount reduction the first year and then grow with sales. Um, and then we're also going to sell, plan to sell more on credit card as we make some changes there. Similar with the the balance sheet, um, we have the ability here over here to enter our own assumptions. Um, we we're going to get a cash inflow uh, in in 2008 and then grow it with sales. We're going to work on our accounts receivable to make sure that those get in more quickly. And we're going to we have an inventory reduction program that we're going to um, institute in 2008 and 2009. Um, our accounts payable, we, ex we plan on extending those to make it align more with our accounts receivable to manage our cash effectively. So again, very quickly, but essentially I'm using our assumptions as opposed to what the tool is forecasting. Um, by clicking that box, we use our own uh, assumptions. Now, what is the impact on the business? Go back to the valuation tool. Okay, wow, this is a big difference. So from $2.5 million dollars, to $5 million by making those changes, the value of our company just doubled in 2012. Moving it back to 2007, it went up to $2.7 million looking at the future of the company. Um, so I hope you found some, uh, it was a very quick uh, review, but I hope you found uh, what you needed out of this tool. It's a powerful enough for, C for CFOs, uh, but yet for the beginner, there's plenty of opportunities to learn um, the impact of ratios and, and uh, how certain changes to your company can affect the bottom line today and uh, how fat your wallet is in the future as far as valuation con is concerned. Uh, for more information, please visit uh, www.topexecs.org um, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the presentation and uh, I hope you find the product as useful as, we, as most of our customers have thus far. Thank you. Mm -hmm.